up guys this is Tito back with another video on the redmi k20 pro and today in this video i'm going to be showing you the latest ROS community build on the redmi k20 pro of course and as you can see from here i have flashed the gapps included version and that is the 13th of may 2021 build the size of this build is about 1470 mb as you can see so yeah this build does include the gapps in it and this is how the Android version section looks like. We have the ROS logo up top. Then we have the device as Rafael in or Redmi K20 Pro of course. And the ROS version says community build. And here if you tap on this, you will get the Android 11s like this kind of logo. And we have the security patch as latest of May 5th, 2021. The stock kernel here is the Immensity kernel. And the build date you can see it is the 14th May 2021 build again and here is the build number and this ROM by the way is still on OSS vendor based and this is not a MIUI vendor based ROM if you want to flash a MIUI vendor based ROM you can flash the like official build but the community one is the OSS vendor based build in the system panel we still do not get a system updater over here which is kind of disappointing if you're someone who is like encrypted and you want to just like install the updates from the system updater that simply is not present over here so you have to flash manually all the flashing guides and like if you're clean flashing or if you're updating all the guides will be listed in the description so do not worry and here we do have the front camera settings and if you go into it we have the camera led disabling option then the front camera raise dialog front camera sound effects we get these many sound effects as you can see and we still have the motor calibration option so you can calibrate your camera over here if you want to and the stock keyboard over here is Gboard of course. Let me show you the latest Orange Fox recovery. This is the 13th May 2021 build of the latest R11.1 stable Orange Fox recovery by the way. And you can flash this Orange Fox recovery with the same method which I showed in that video. The flashing guide pretty much and you can watch that from the description box below too so do not worry. And yes this is the latest version I just flashed it. And let me show you how it looks in the like file section. As you can see this is how it looks we also get the search option over here so you can search for any particular folder or something from here that is great and you can of course short them out from here there is also this three dots which has this show hidden files auto detect file type then the make file icon bigger create folder action on this folder everything else that you get and also you can change the like partition from here like if you want to switch to the OTG or something, you can do that from here. Then if you are like taking a backup or something, let me show you. If you click on the plus, we have all of these stuff over here. View meta, EFS, persist, everything still is there. We also have this lock option over here in this backup. And if you go to the settings, we have these kind of backup settings. In the wipe section, this is pretty similar. And we have also the format data option if you want to do that. In the menu section, we have this flashlight option if you want to like turn on your flashlight when you are even in recovery that is great that it is there in the settings we have this general kind of stuff and over here if you go back we have the ota kind of enabling option customizations are still there we have the themes option then we also have the gesture over here if you can customize it then we have navigation bar options then lock screen we have the clock and stuff let me go back we have the splash kind of image you can change that then we have the keyboard option and you can have the number row separately if you want to and we have these many fonts as you can see primary secondary and size you can change that too from here and also in the other option we have these monoscope font in terminal then the expand list automatically apply theme without confirmation these kind of stuff are there and we have these display security etc in the security we have all these options then we have the display customization you can have the timeout to off and change the brightness if you want to vibration you can customize that but on my device the vibrations are not working i don't know why let me go back we have the regional kind of stuff and you can from here set the clock of this recovery and there is the about section so yeah pretty great that we also got an update on the latest stable orange box recovery the coolest change over here is the reboot option let me tap on this reboot and as you can see it shows kind of the rom android 11 roms over here and it shows the power off and system and recovery this is pretty great that it looks like this earlier it was the list view kind of options and right now you can just select recovery if you want to reboot the recovery and if you want to reboot the system you can just tap on system if you want to reboot the fast boot just tap on bootloader then if you want to power out the device off then just tap on power off so yeah i'm gonna reboot to system and by the way we still get the ROS launcher over here by default and if you go into the settings of it we have the allow edit option notification dots and add app icons to the home screen show google app and icon packs and stuff you can change you can disable the suggestions if you want to then we have the notification gestures double tap gestures this double tap gesture just means double tapping on the home screen anywhere it will make the phone sleep so yeah that is great 
and we also have the swipe down to clear all recents. On the stock launcher to the left, we get the Google's Discover page, of course. And if you swipe like this, as you can see, the whole UI is pretty smooth. It's not like laggy or at all. And here, if you swipe down, you will get the quick settings panel and we have the widgets and stuff working totally fine. And you can also search for some particular app over here in the app drawer, as you can see. Now, let me show you the quick settings panel. If you tap on the edit button, you will like have much more toggle options. As you can see, we have these live caption and stuff and you can add multiple toggles over here. So I did add a couple of toggles. Let me show you. Here we have the night light, the battery saver, dark theme, etc. Then we have the screen recorder option. So with that, you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time. So that is just great. Also, we have the peak notification hotspot, do not disturb data saver. And this is the sound kind of toggle as you can see. And with this, if you tap and hold on it, as you are noticing, you can like increase or decrease the volume like this and you can expand the volume panel just like this. So yeah, this is very cool. And when you have do not disturb enabled, if you're noticing on the volume panel on the right side over here, there is a do not disturb icon. So yeah, this is very cool. And we have this reboot toggle over here. So you can tap and hold on it. You can directly reboot to recovery or fast boot from this section. Jumping into the settings panel, this is how it looks like. And this is pretty simplistic stock Android ish look over here that you get. And in the battery settings, we have this kind of battery over here and we have the full battery usage from here if you tap here and there is the last full charge screen on time and the battery temperature. Well, in my personal usage, I would say yes, the OSS vendor based like ROM does not have that much great battery life, but it can definitely give you five to six hours of screen on time easily and it does support 33 watt or 18 watt fast charging no issues with that and we have the battery manager over here then we have the battery saver thermal profiles are also there so you can set thermal profiles for each app over here smart charging is also there then we have the battery charging light for do not disturb and stuff then we also have the battery icon style you can change the icon style to portrait circle dotted circle fill circle etc and then we have the status bar battery percentage you can set it to next to the icon or inside the icon or you can totally hide it Jumping into the display settings, we have the brightness level over here, then the dark theme. And if you go into the dark theme, if you enable dark theme, let me show you. From here, we have the color bucket choice. So you can choose any kind of color bucket from here. So I have been using it with the Raven black. That's how you get the AMOLED kind of black over here. So yeah, that is working totally fine. We have the adaptive or auto brightness and inside styles and wallpapers. You can customize the theme just like this. As you can see, you have these many font option. Then we have these icons and then we have all of these accent colors, including these yellow and stuff. So all of these accent color that you get, you can create a custom theme and apply that to have that accent color or some particular font. In the wallpaper section, as you can see, this is the wallpaper that you get by default over here. But I have been using a wallpaper from the Wallpi app, I'll list it below. In the grid option, we have up to six by six grid, as you can see. And in the clock section, we have these many lock screen clocks up to this fluid one. Then we have the ID type, etc. Samsung Bolt and other clocks are there. Then we have the auto rotated screen and colors are set to boosted over here. And we have the screen saver. And in the lock screen, we have the lock screen charging info. Then if you scroll down, we have the display media cover art. Then the screen of animation is also there. So that's cool. And we have the always show time and info that is the always on display. And we also have the pocket detection or prevent accidental wake up. Then we also have the fingerprint unlock. This is the force fingerprint unlock, by the way. And it does work super fine. My storage is decrypted. That's why it is working fine. Whenever I'm rebooting the device, I don't have to enter the pin. I can just tap the fingerprint scanner and that unlocks the device. We have the double tap to wake and the enable blurs option over here font size display size the dpi customization then inside weather you can like enable it over here and as you can see from here you can enable it and choose your weather provider and stuff weather stuff is working fine status bar icons are there headset blue that's the icons you can customize from here also there is the vault icon enabling option and that's the reason why you are seeing this vault icon over here then inside ambient display we have these always on and stuff you can customize that if you want to so in the display settings one thing is still missing that is the dc dimming over here so if you really need dc dimming as you can see there is no option for that even in the quick toggle section in the sound settings, we have the media call, etc. volume option and link ringtone notification volume, etc. options are there. Show volume panel on the left side is there. Then the vibrate for calls option is there. Then if you scroll down, we have the dial pad tones, the screen locking sound, charging sound, charging vibration, etc. Touch sound, touch vibration, 
vibrate on connect call waiting or disconnect is there so the in call vibrations are there in the sound settings if you go to the me audio dirac we have the sound enhancer over here and we get these mini presets for the me sound enhancer and also we get these rock jazz pop etc presets and enable hi-fi option is also there and sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well is super good no issues whatsoever but i did face some problems over here like whenever i was listening to bluetooth and then i plugged in my wired headset then the mic was not working in a call or something so then i just had to reboot once that did fix the problem so yeah those kind of problems are there like if you're switching a lot of headphones that might be an issue like from bluetooth to wired yeah that problem i did face a couple of times but it was not on this latest build it was on the previous build and by the way this is how the in-call ui looks like it does not have the call recording option or something so that's how it is you have to keep that in mind but volte calling or via wi-fi both are working fine here no issues with that now inside security if you go into the settings of this like pin section as you can see you get the lock screen timeout over here then we have the power button instantly locks then we have the fod recognizing animation and from here if you tap on this recognizing animation you can choose from this miui default or pulse or the mclaren option then strips wave dna future etc options are there let me go back we have the screen of fingerprint so you can enable that if you want to now let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed so i'll just double tap in the home screen just like this and as you can see this is how the always on display looks like so from the always on display let me try it and as you are noticing the fingerprint scanner is working flawlessly even with my left hand thumb let me try it again and as you can see again it is working fine now from the lock screen i'll just double tap over here and right now as you can see even from the lock screen the fingerprint scanner is working totally fine no issues whatsoever even the animations are working fine here time to set up the face unlock over here and let me actually do this it's quite dark so right now i'm gonna double tap over here in the home screen and right now if i double tap to wake so i have to swipe up i guess okay so i swipe it up and then only it pops out the front camera and then unlocks let me show you one more time as you can see so yeah for this face unlock you have to swipe up there is no other choice and this is how the app locker interface looks like and you can lock any particular app from here as you can see you are seeing this like lock icon whenever you tap it it will be locked like those apps will be locked you can hide particular apps notification from here if you want to and then you can search for any particular app from here and as you can see you can lock that particular app from here very easily and if you tap on this lock app after you can select instantly or 15 seconds or screen off you can go with anything i have been using it with the 15 seconds and by the way this is how the app locking interface looks like whenever you are opening the lock tab and you can tap the fingerprint scanner or use your pin or use your face data so yeah that is great and right now let me show you as you can see the app locking stuff is working super fine no issues with that now let's talk about the stock camera over here well the, you get the google camera over here this is the google camera go edition not the like actual google camera this is the google camera go edition by the way and this is actually working flawlessly as you can see even we have the like face retouching mode over here so yeah this is great that we have all of these features and the google camera go edition by default in my personal opinion is a great choice and it does shoot basic videos and there is a translate option then in the photo mode we have like normal if you go into the settings we have these face enhance option night mode etc this is a pretty great stock camera to begin with in my opinion because it does not have the miui camera i have flashed the anx camera over here with magic scan stuff if you want to flash the anx camera check out the description for the guide or you can click on the card right there and this anx camera is working fine even all the lenses are working fine as you can see wide angle and telephoto stuff and in the video settings we have the 4k 60 fps and everything is working over here no issues with the anx camera on this particular rom even the front camera selfies and stuff should be fine over here as you are noticing i did install also another google camera this is the px kind of version and i'll list it below in the description do not worry and this one too should be working fine here and you can zoom it in a little bit and you can take night set photos and stuff now let's talk about the customizations of ROS. Well, you don't get too much customization here. You get the basic, very convenient customizations in my opinion. Now here in the buttons, we have the enable advanced restart. And let me show you over here, we do have this kind of power menu and you can turn on your smart light or something if you have some smart light in your house. And if you tap on restart right now, as you can see, you can get the directly rebooting option to system or recovery or hot reboot or just the bootloader. Then we also have the power menu action. You get these many actions. Then we have the invert layout, playback control, volume, wake, etc. If you go back, we have the gestures option. Then we have the quickly open camera, then the activate the torch. 
this is only like having the long press power button toggle torch there is no double press power button toggle torch that action is for the quickly open camera and we have the system navigation gestures if you go to the settings of that we have the gesture bar length customization but there is no like pill bar thickness customization over here two button or three button navigation is also there then we have the swipe to take screenshot and this is how it looks like and there is no long screenshot option over here although we do get the share edit and delete option over here in the power menu over here we don't get much we have the device control and sensitive control then we have the double tap to sleep on the status bar and that works fine now i did flash magisk over here and with that i did use magisk kind and stuff but right out of the box on this rom the safety net also passes and you can use banking apps over here without any issues talking about the drm info well my drm shows l3 because i broke it permanently but if you have not broken it your drm should be fine over here because the latest oss vendor based roms are totally fine they don't break sensors anymore so yeah that problem has been fixed so if you have l1 certification in this white wine certificate you should not worry about your drm info it should be l1 and it should be intact over here now let's quickly open couple of apps from the memory and i do have couple of apps opened over here as you can see from the recent panel and by the way on the recent panel we have the clear all then the screenshot and if you tap here you get the split screen and the pin option from here so let me try from like one by one the apps which i have opened chrome as you can see is in memory and facebook still in memory twitter is in memory play store still in memory youtube is still in memory now instagram still in memory Google Home is still in memory and the Spotify of course still in memory. Now let's open this Mi Feed app and as you are noticing it is still in memory. Now okay I did not open Mi Home earlier but yeah as you can see I did open right now. Right now let's just switch between these apps. So yeah all the apps seems like it stays in memory. Flipkart is also in memory and YouTube is also in memory. So in my personal opinion the like memory management of this ROM is just great and you won't be having any issues over here. if you are switching between apps a lot over here as you can see the performance is great and if you are worried about the gaming performance and stuff here are the benchmarks as you are noticing so in my personal opinion the performance of this ROS OS vendor based rom is just amazing you won't be having any issues with the daily driving experience or even gaming performance over here only thing is i would say if you really want a really really great battery life just go with the official version of the ROS that will give you much better experience because The OSS vendor does not offer that much of the battery life, but it does offer really, really like better performance even when compared to the MIUI version of Air OS. I did not face any kind of like random reboots or something on this ROM. No issues like that. And here, hey Google, voice detection is also working. As you can see, it brings the Google Assistant. Let me show you one more time. Hey Google. As you can see again, Google Assistant is working fine with the voice trigger kind of stuff. So in my personal opinion the ROS OS is vendor based rom is one of the best roms for the Redmi K20 Pro and it is like holding pretty well and I have been daily driving on this rom no issues whatsoever that I have faced let me know in the comments what do you guys think give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today I'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now